Hey, Mambo. Welcome again. Yay. Dragged you out Thank on you. Wednesday. We had uh, good, some yes. good games this weekend. Some some happy fans. Some guys are upset, crying. The usual ones, you know who they are. But let's just start. We'll go through all the games anyway. And start through the, especially down the bottom of the table, or the lower team, shall we say. Yes. Um, the first one is, okay, let's, let's, let's talk about Brentford and Southampton. I mean, that, that finished 3-1. Uh, to Brentford at home. I mean, how's that? How's that? Yeah. Look? And then you know, our guy, our guy made his debut. <laughs> I just think he uh, at that for Southampton. Yeah, yeah, he's playing for he's gone to Southampton. So they yeah, they that, that's the they, they why they in that game and he, he shipped him. The reason goals. why they the the reason why they lost three zero. You know that our guy has the concentration span is very low. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's why I let let him go. He's a good goalkeeper though, but I think he has a problem with concentration. But Bradford beating Southampton is a good thing. You know, if Anthony left for Saudi Arabia League, I call him the Gabra. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's got some bigger bets over there. Like uh, oh, ready to he's up. gone he's going to get some big bets and Saudi Saudi Arabia League will not punish him. <laughs> but that's a good result for Brentford. Uh, you know, yeah, it's a good result. Yeah, considering that game they had recently. Okay, the next one. Yes. Uh, Everton seems to be going on uh, the same journey. They got beaten three uh, two at home to Bournemouth. You know, the game was very interesting. Everton was leading two nil. Cal- uh, Calvert Lewis scored a good goal, and 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 you know, by the end of the game, I thought it's a win for them. How Bournemouth came back from. From one goal to win the game, and I think this time Everton, if they continue the way they are, they'll go down to the relegation zone. Last season they survived by a miracle, but this season, uh, it's very possible they'll be one of the teams that will be relegated. You, <laughs> yeah, I mean they 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 just about scraped the losses, didn't they? So they they're looking, yeah. yeah, they're looking like they could be on that same journey again. But Bournemouth, how, Bournemouth, are, Bournemouth are quite impressive. I mean, they're, they're always a sneaky team. Very true. Very true. But you, you could see how they played from the 80th minute to the to the last whistle. They were willing to go and score and convert those goals. And Everton had a very... The defence was very poor. And how a, such a team like Bournemouth come back from a goal down and win, 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 win against... Everton on their own Merseyside field. It's, it's yeah, yeah. It's I mean, crazy. that's three games, man. That's, these guys have got three games, zero yeah, points. Zero like, points. It's the they they're, they're already straight away competing to be relegation battle. But that's yeah, that's how they are. Bournemouth, Bournemouth got a good start. I think they have five points. All right, let's go to the yeah. next one. Then now now we've got the next one. Ipswich Fulham. That finished. That finished one one. It's a good point for Ipswich. That is actually because Fulham, Fulham are pretty decent when you look at it. Yeah, they, you know. they are a good team. Yeah, it's a good point for Ipswich and it's their first point. So it's a good start for them. Yeah, there's not much to say about that for them in that area. Then yeah. you have uh, Nottingham Forest and Wolves finished 1 1 as well. Wolves as well, I think, I mean, <clears> they're only for their first point of the season as well. It's their first point, you know. They lost against Arsenal. They were hammered by Chelsea, and 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 they managed to get a point against Nottingham in Nottingham home ground. So it's a good point for them. It's a bad one for for Nottingham. You know, by having 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 considered six goals, Nottingham could have utilized this moment to put in some more goals and 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 have some three points in their bag, but. It is what it yeah. is. That's that's not too good for you, man. I mean, it is still early, early in the season. All right, and now yeah. now we're getting to look closer to some big, big heavy hitters. Uh, yeah. It was Leicester Aston Villa. That was that was a good game, but Aston Villa showing their class again, and now it's two one away. Yes. They won. Uh they are seven points. Hmm. Oh, Aston who Aston Villa. Yes, yeah, six points now. Oh, six points. Yes, six points. 
won they, they won, they won two and lost to Arsenal, didn't they? Oh yes, yes. Our good good debuting guys is a masterclass in what he is doing in Aston Villa. And remember, they have qualified for Champions League. So this time, Aston Villa is not an easy team to beat around. We managed to beat them as Arsenal, but I I know United will take them to higher heights than what people think, and most people will underestimate Aston Villa, but they will be surprised. What do you think? I, I think I think Aston Villa are this uh, impressive side. I think they're going to go far. Um, top four again, possibility, but I won't count out you know, anything happening. I mean, it's all about the consistency. I, I, I sort of always have a better feeling after the first 10 games. After 10 games, you kind of learn these teams, you know, where, where they're about and how consistent they've been. And like you said, Champions League is going to make it very difficult for them as well. Like, no matter how yeah. how well they play, we all know that that Wednesday, Tuesday games, so especially especially this new format as well, this new Champions League format is, it looks like a drainer, man. <laughs> it's, 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 it's more games, isn't it? With... It's more games in the group stages now. Yeah, and, and whoever came up with that format, God bless him. It's a, it will be entertaining. Then you got uh, Newcastle, Tottenham. Uh, again, oh. Tottenham flatter to de- deceive again. Two one. Of course, uh, Newcastle. And 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 you remember all the goals were scored by Newcastle players. Mm. Yes, I remember <laughs> that. <laughs> so Tottenham are still so, still struggling from the, by their standards yes. anyway in in this early part yeah. of the season. Um, I actually saw what is it, Darren Bent on talk radio talking some yeah. serious nonsense. What was he mentioning? He said that, um, the Tottenham manager, if he manages Manchester City, he this Manchester City team and Pep Guardiola went the other way and managed Tottenham that he would win before Guardiola wins at Tottenham, that he would win at City, you know. <laughs> and I just think he like but, I, I don't understand what what exactly did this manager do at Tottenham to make him think that he can go and manage City and and just like I, I think I think it's the caliber of players you have around. Yeah, but but when you like, look at City, you can't really say they have players on another level. From you know when you look at that have... when, you, when you look at the other previous Premier League winners, City is yeah. probably the only team. At previous Premier League winners that are winning compared to previous, maybe Leicester's an outlier, but City probably have the least technical players when you look at it. Like if you look at the, like, the Alex Ferguson United teams, you know, or the Arsenal yes. teams, Invincibles, I mean, they had players, you know what I mean? But these guys, these guys are winning with Phil Foden and <laughs> and, and, and Walker and, uh, and these other guys, you know what I mean? It's like, it's not... Stones. Yeah, yeah, you can't. I mean, even I mean, look at look at Doku. Doku is not he's not going to score you twenty five goals or something, but it's like it's just they play in this machine that just ticks together. You know, it's like it's a clock. The way they the way they play their game. I mean, look at the United team: Ronaldo, Tevez, uh, Rooney. You know, with that mid midfield behind them, course. even they could not do that that many what, seasons, games, titles in a row. You know, but but let me ask you the question. Is it that City is a good team and 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 the other teams could not uh, get to buy such caliber of players within a certain period of time? That's why it made City easy for them to dominate the league. Because if you look at the previous, let's say between the period of 2000 to 2012 or 2014, you see like the caliber of Players that were in Arsenal, Chelsea, yeah. Manchester United. You see, like there were three, they they had equal fair fair play players, but it came to a time City spent so much money, they built a squad for the future, and the future is what they are doing now. So yeah, they, buy, they buy players they need in positions, you know. They buy, City bring in players that are not, you know, lighting up other leagues or everyone is chasing. You know, they signed this boy from Girona, this Brazilian kid. You didn't see 
all of the newspapers. There was not Sky Sports News talking about this guy and, and the fans going crazy. You know what I mean? There wasn't any of that mad excitement. He just came in quietly. It cost nothing. <laughs> you know? No, he's shiny. Yes, it's the same thing. When they signed when they signed Doku, did you see it in any newspapers? Who knew, yeah? who knew Doku? Yeah. No one knew Doku. It's the same thing. When they signed uh, Ruben Diaz or, or, or they signed Laporte. Um, what do we have? Of course, then we've got the Chelsea Crystal Palace. Uh, I remember I'm watching one. that game. Who was it that was telling me? I was speaking to a friend of mine who's like, oh, Chelsea, Chelsea, this is this Chelsea after that 6-2 win. You know, look at them, look at them. They're flying, they're flying. I knew, knew they were going to be dangerous. And I was just like, come on, man. It's early, man. They just they'll score an early goal. Let's wait second half and see <laughs> what Chelsea do. And, you know, lo and behold, Typical Chelsea. They were rocky, and Derby. Huh? They were rocky, actually. They would have lost that game. Chelsea, yeah? Uh, yes. Chelsea. They, just, they run yeah, around they like erratic. I don't, I don't know what tactic. But again, he's a new manager. He needs time to settle. You know, he, he, just, he just turned up. Let's see what he does on that area. We give him 15, 15 games and we see how they perform. If they then, have managed to correct around that 30 points, yeah. it's a good... <laughs> then we got your favorite game of the weekend. Yeah, the <laughs> the farmers <laughs> United. <laughs> Not even, even, even. I don't think they are. They are even farmers are good now. Three 0 They are blacks. Uh, they are blacks. Old Trafford. They lost. <laughs> they are. They are blacksmiths. Ah, they got. They got outclassed. I mean. I actually think Liverpool, Liverpool was surprised. They didn't, they didn't need to do much. Liverpool didn't need to do much because they, they probably felt like, wait a minute, okay. We're putting we're putting some passes together, you know, and then they're seeing Casemiro looking at his retire, looking at his paycheck. He got confused. The ball is there and he's looking at the, the Friday paycheck as it arrived. <laughs> yeah. He kind of, his head went one way. Actually, I've seen a report saying that the... Casemiro wants to go to Galatasaray on loan, and I'm like, why are they chasing their most experienced player? <laughs> did you see what his wife, Casemiro's wife, did on on the, was it on X? Oh yeah, he posted she the posted she, the, the trophies. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what that's meant to mean. It doesn't, doesn't mean nothing. It's meant like mean Casemiro. No, it, it meant Casemiro is your best player. So. It meant to me. I told you last time, Casemiro is the best player, but the problem is he has some standard players around him. Oh, oh. <laughs> you know, you know the, the, the you know the problem. Listen, this is the problem with players like Casemiro. Like this is why I always felt when he played when he played at Real Madrid, I never rated him as highly as other defensive midfielders because he never had the legs. It's the same thing for me. I feel like Tony Cruz. Tony Cruz came to the Premier League, he would get run around like that. It's the same for Xhaka. Look at Xhaka in Bundesliga. But look at him in the Premier League. He gets the, there's no time. No one's giving you that space to just run around. When you're at Real Madrid or you're at Bayern Munich or whatever, or these big clubs, you got time, you need ball, teams are sitting back on you. You can just get that ball, whip it side to side, you know, play it nicely and comfortable. In the Premier League, these these people they're just running at you. There's no there's no space. They're just looking to nibble the ball off your feet. That's the game is yeah. played a lot of pressure, high pressure up of the pitch. So he just got caught. He just basic mistakes. Like he can't, like he did exactly the same thing that frustrated me about Xhaka at Arsenal. You know, like just daydreaming on the ball. Like he thinks you have time. Like no one's behind you. No one's chasing you. And this and his wife, I don't know what his wife is uh, moaning about. I mean, she's, they're getting, they're getting that money still. Money's not going to get cut off because of the performance. But that was then. This is now. Those trophies were then, you know. This is now. You're playing now. You're playing for my United. So I don't see, you know, it would be good. If, if I was my United fan, I'd be like, good, bring us one of those uh, Champions League <laughs> trophies then, if you can. Huh? Uh, but the other thing you have to understand, since Casemiro signed in for, for, for Man United, he's been like the main focus guy shouldering all the pressure of Man United. There are some games he has really delivered for Manchester United, even the previous seasons. And this is just like two games, two or three games that yeah, but the don't pressure is mounting well. too much. <laughs> don't forget yeah. Rashford as well. He's also, 
He's because he's English. They're not. They're not going after yeah, him as that's much. That's the reason. But wait, yeah, wait, because he's wait for a few more games. Wait for a few more. Huh? Wait for a few more games because now you know Rashford is they they slowly creeping on him now. Uh, yeah. Three games, no shots on goal. Forget goals. Not even yeah. attempted. No, no shots on goal. The question. I, let me ask you a question about Rashford. So why did they bring root Banistro? No, I think I think that's the wrong question. The question you need to ask me about Rashford is what I think of him as a player, which is that I think he's shit. Okay. <laughs> that's that's what I Ruud van Nistelrooy. Because he, I, I think, they brought uh, him to, to 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 train Rashford and have, but now we can see three games Rashford no shot. What are, what are they training about? No, I think he's confused. I think Ruud van Nistelrooy actually thought they signed him to play. <laughs> <laughs> Huh? <laughs> He's he got a little bit confused. They gave him a training coach outfit. He was like, "What's, yeah. go, what's going on here? <laughs> Who am I meant to coach? Done. Rashford?" <laughs> so, and this other boy, I don't know what the other Dutch boy was. It that young black kid is Izaki or Izeri or whatever. Like all these unknown players that just come out of nowhere. How did the never, Afro guy? Before. It never used to happen before. I, never. I, you, I mean, you needed to I, be. I, you needed to be. You needed to have CVs. You know, you need to have CVs before to come to places these big clubs. To play clubs. for Manchester United. Yeah. You needed to have a CV. You know? That boy, I think, that boy, I think, is the reincarnation of Ferrain. Say that again? The the boy, the, the Zike or something, I think he's the reincarnation of Ferrain. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, he got, he got, at least, at least he, he got a goal, didn't he? In, uh, against, was it against? Uh, Fulham. Fulham, yeah. Fulham. But at least he had some shots on target and, 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 uh, he, and tried to positioning himself in the right position. But going forward, he'll fight it hard. I told you, Manchester United will be beaten by Southampton. We can bet on this. Your predictions are, you got, you got very low. Low standard mm -hmm. of United. But then Liverpool, well, again, win three points, no goals conceded. They look they yeah. look sharp. You know what? You know, Diaz, Diaz looks Diaz is looking uh, this season. Sharp. Ah. He's looking like he wants to do something this season. Hmm? But you, the, the good thing with the Liverpool, all the players have been playing together, on with the exception of new added talent. I I think for the for me uh, I'm looking forward to uh, Manchester City Liverpool game and and Liverpool and Arsenal game. That one will be really interesting to watch. Those I, I think will be Liverpool. I think Arsenal will be Liverpool. And and I don't and think also I don't think I think, Aston, I think Aston, this Liverpool Aston. team. No, this is the same team from last season. Arsenal will beat them. And also Aston Villa versus, versus Liverpool. That game will be interesting. Uh, that would be tough. Yeah. I mean, Liverpool tough. had a good start to the season. Uh, everyone says, like, a yeah, statement. I still don't think. I think for them, playing away to Man United, for me, I think Liverpool is the same as playing away to Ipswich. <laughs> I don't think. That. You, can't, you can't put Man United anywhere, man. I mean, considering... When you looked at that squad, the same nonsense that finished how far off the table, and you know what? What the same manager, same tactics. I don't know where they where they think they're going to come back on on that nonsense. You know, did, did you listen to? Okay, now well, let's 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 get to City. Yeah. I mean, what can we say? Um, everyone's trying to find excuses. I was looking at some some videos on Talk Talk. Uh, not talk talk. Sorry, it's, uh, it's a talk TV, sport TV, mm. and it's like all these former players and these random pundits all talking the excitement. I mean, first of all, you know, you know when people get too excited, it's now that everyone people just start saying that you know, oh, Haaland is the best in the Premier League. You know, if you had a choice between Haaland and Henri, you know, you would pick Haaland. <laughs> you know, everyone is like. Get a little bit too excited. And then one of them, one of them got really excited. He said, like, I think he's going to pass Messi's. You know? And the guy was like, What do you mean he's gonna pass? He's gonna pass Messi in numbers. Messi and he's gonna pass Messi and Ronaldo in numbers. And I'm thinking, okay, wow. 
these guys they really don't know the maths do they they haven't done their maths you know as much as Haaland has done now yeah yeah he's a brilliant player yeah yeah, yeah. as he's a brilliant player but as much goals as he's got now yeah I'll put into context for you he to to outscore his career because Haaland now is if I'm correct he's 24 or 25 he's 24 I don't know he's 24 yeah. years old yeah Haaland is 24 mm. years old he needs to score uh, the next 10 years to make it longer, which means up to 34. Yeah? Yeah. Give him 10 years to make it longer. If you make the year shorter, he needs to score more goals. <laughs> yeah. But the next 10 years, he needs to score a minimum of 40 goals a season. Yes. 40 goals. So let's just say he ain't going he ain't gonna to be doing this at 34. <laughs> nah, you know, he ain't gonna be even doing the that. next two, even the next two seasons, it'd be very hard for him to do that. So it means give him at his peak that he's playing now. Yeah. Say he's got another five years at his peak. Yes. Yeah. That'd be, that'd be like 200 goals. So he needs in these next five years, he needs to be scoring, he needs to average eight, almost 80 goals, 80 goals, 80 goals a season. Just quickly before we leave, uh, we can quickly just look at the next round after the international breaks. Okay, we've got yes. on Saturday, the Saturday games and the Sunday games. There's no Monday games. So mm -hmm. Saturday kickoff first is Southampton, May United. Southampton. Then we've got Brighton, Ipswich. Brighton. Then you've got Crystal Palace, Leicester. Drew. Then you have Fulham, West Ham. Uh, West Ham. Then you have uh, Liverpool, Nottingham Forest. Uh, definitely Liverpool. Yeah. Then Manchester City, Brentford. A draw. <laughs> then Aston Villa, uh, Everton. Aston Villa. Uh, Bournemouth, Chelsea. Bournemouth. Okay. And then moving on to Sunday. This is yeah. the one. North London Derby, Tottenham, Arsenal. Arsenal. Then Wolves and Newcastle. It's a draw. There we go. All right, then. So that's what we've got to look yeah. forward to. So we'll, we'll see anyway. We'll come back again yes. in the next few days and then see, talk about some of the big boys, see if any, any idiots has got injured during the international breaks. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, let's wait for the next. But one thing I'm sure is that we are all there at the, at the, at, at the Southampton Stadium. Yeah, yeah, we're all gonna be there. Sharing, yes. sharing the farmers. Don't forget to subscribe. Yeah, yeah. you're helping us. This channel's growing. We passed four thousand now. We're going up. <laughs>